What we're having a look at today is a kind of diagram which some of you have encountered before, but perhaps not all of you. It's called a Venn diagram, named after a guy named John Venn, and it was a way to represent the relationships between different groups of things. Now, remember, we're in the topic probability, so we're going to come to the connection between this and probability in a few minutes, but first, let's have a look at what you've got here, right? Now, before you start fiddling, you can see you've got a series of shapes here, and we can represent these shapes according to different groups, and we can rule, use different rules to divide these up, right? Now, if you have a look up the top there, you'll notice, I'll just zoom in for you, you'll notice there's a few different kinds of ways we can break up these groups. So this is where you've just got one group, and then everything that's not in that group. Okay, so that's a very simple Venn diagram. You have this diagram here, where the two categories that we can choose are completely separate. So I'll give you some more language for that in a second, but have a look for a minute. If I select that, you've got your two different groups of things, and they will represent two things that have no overlap. So as an example, if I chose a rule, someone pick one of these for me, please. Squares. Squares. Okay, if I pick squares, zoop. And then if I have a look at my options for my second rule over here, you can see that my list has gotten a lot shorter. Did you notice that? Can I zoom in? I think it's going to look the same size if I, no, it's not going to let me. Um, I used to have like lots more options here. Did you notice? I used to have like big and small and all that kind of thing. But here I've only got circles, triangles, and hexagons because you can't be a square, square, and a circle at the same time. You can't be a square and a triangle at the same time. Does that make sense? But I'd like you all now to do, you can lift your lid back up now, is I want you to select that third one where you can see there's an overlap here. This is where we're going to have a bit of a think. Now I invite you to select any two rules for circle one and circle two. I'm going to pick, you can pick the same as me or a different if you like, I'm going to pick hexagons for rule uh, for circle number one, so everything in this circle, I'm going to put my hexagons in. And then on the other side, I'm going to choose, uh, I'm going to go with small. So these things are all going to be circle, sorry, hexagons, and these things are all going to be small, for me anyway. I will let you pick your own rules and give you a couple of minutes. You just drag and drop shapes. So this is a, a shape that is neither a hexagon nor small, so it goes on the outside. Um, if I picked a shape like this red one here, where is this one going to go, guys? This, this red one here. Where should it go? Should it go, is it big or small? small. It's small, so it's going to be in this circle. Is it in the middle part or the right part? It's in the... Well, let's just try in the middle and see what happens. If I let go, oh, it goes back because what is that middle area? It's, it's both of them at the same time, right? It'll be small and hexagons, which is not right. So I'm going to put that in the right spot. Why don't you go ahead, pick your rules, and then put all the shapes in. And then once you've done that, for whatever it is that you've got, can you draw that diagram into your book, whatever it is that you choose, okay? So go ahead, put all the shapes in the right spots, and then draw it in your book. Thank you. You can see what I've done is, once I've put them all in on the screen, I've now said, oh, okay. This is what I've got, and you can see I've done my best to draw it. I don't have a yellow whiteboard marker, so I used orange. Um, hopefully you can somewhat see the difference, even though it doesn't matter for this, because I didn't choose color as any of my rules, okay? Now, yours will probably look a little bit different because um, you may not have chosen the same rules that I did, though we'll probably be working with more or less the same shapes. Now, how do we connect this to probability? Well, when we're thinking about, for example, a group of different things, and um, maybe they're all in a bucket, and you're like, I'm going to pick one of these shapes out, right? I can say, what's the probability of getting a small circle? That could be a question that I ask, right? Or what's the probability of getting a big shape? That could be another question that I ask, and I will base my answers based on all of the different arrangements of shapes here and how many there are in each region. So here's what we're going to do. I want to, um, once you've got your diagram there, I want us to sort of convert this into something that's a little more easy to work with numerically, and then we will answer some questions about it, okay? So underneath where you've got your diagram which has shapes in it, okay? If I want to work out, for instance, the probability of, if I've got all these shapes in a bag, and I say to you, I draw one out of random, what's the probability that I pick out a large hexagon? Okay, I mean you can see how many large hexagons there are, and you can see there's all these other shapes. What I really need to know is, how many do I have of each? How many are favorable events? 
Um, how large is the, what is it called again when we have all of the things all together? Every possibility is called the? Sample space, very good. So I just need to know how many there are. It's really the number in each little section that's the most important to me, okay? So underneath your diagram, or maybe beside, I'm gonna do mine underneath. I'd like you to redraw the Venn part of the Venn diagram. So you got these circles. It is important to label them with whatever it is your rules were chosen. I chose hexagons and small. And then what we're gonna do is do a count of each little area and how many shapes there are in each one, okay? So, before you have a go at your one, can you help me out with mine? How many shapes do you see, let's go on the outside, in the rectangle but not in any of the circles, how many shapes do you count? Are there nine? Nine? So I'm gonna put um, a nine on the outside. So this represents all of the shapes that are neither hexagons nor small. So it's all the big non-hexagon Shapes. That's the complement. Does that make sense? Um, how many shapes in here? This is a bit easier to count. Three that are hexagons but not small. What about right in the middle? Three small hexagons and lastly nine. Okay fantastic. So you may actually have depending on the uh, different rules that you chose for your circles you may have some very similar numbers to me. What we can say here is the size of the sample space is every single item all counted up together. And you can do this for your own as well. Three plus three plus nine plus nine. Anyone tell me? 20. 21? 20. This is six. What was that? 24, I think. Yeah, okay. I was like, wait, did I miscount before? 24 is how many I got, okay? Now, if you actually have a look, you could hit reset once you finish drawing on your thing. And I think what will happen is all the shapes go over to the left hand side. And if I remember correctly, you'll see it nicely lines up. There's um, three across and then I think it goes eight down. Three times eight, 24. Do you have the same number as I do? Yes? No? Yeah. Same number? Yeah. Fantastic. So now, underneath this, right, if I said to you, what is the probability of drawing out a uh, large hexagon from here. So I'm going to say P of large hexagon. How many large hexagons are there on my diagram? There are three, right? It's that little uh, region over here. So that's the top of my fraction, the favorable events, three. And then on the denominator for a probability, it's going to be the whole sample space, right? Like I'm drawing out of the whole bag. So in this case, it would be? 24, very good. And you could go further and then simplify that, right? Let me ask you another question. How about the probability of, say, just a hexagon, full stop? The probability of any kind of hexagon. This is, yeah, it's going to be six, isn't it? The three and the three together. So I'm going to say that's six out of the same 24. And again, I can go forward and I can simplify that, okay? Now, if I then say, we said large hexagon, regular hexagons, this area in between, right, where there's an overlap, what would you call those shapes, these shapes in here, on my diagram? It's small hexagons, yeah? So I want it to be small and a hexagon. And that's a way of saying this area that overlaps. So I'm actually going to write that in that particular way. It's small and it's a hexagon. Um, how many shapes? Small and a hexagon. It's a similar fraction to one we've already seen, right? It's going to be? Hold on, hold on. There's three in there, right? Three out of the same 24. I'm not even going to bother simplifying that fraction. You already get it. Now, can you look up for a second? I just want to hit pause on your writing because now I'm going to make a very small distinction in a word anyway, but actually makes a big difference. So just look up for a second. Look up, look up, look up. I want to have a look at the same idea here, but instead of the word and, I'm going to substitute in the word or. And it's a tiny, tiny difference, but it makes a big sort of distinction in how we answer this question. Small or hexagon, how would you look at this diagram and tell me which parts of it are included? Yeah, Jessica. Um, so basically, the two outer circles, but not the ones in between. So, the two out to circles, but not the ones in between? Hmm, what do you guys reckon? Small hexagon. 
Um, is this shape small? Yeah. Is it a hexagon? Yeah. So is it small or hexagon? Ah, so what you're picking up on is this ambiguity, right? Now this phrase in itself is kind of like the fact that half of you reckon it's this way and half of you reckon it's that way sort of points out that our language does have limitations, right? I think those of you who are saying, um, who agree with Jessica are saying it's a hexagon or it's small, but it's not both. Does that make sense? Like that's what you're trying to exclude. I can write this, I'm going to take this, I can write this in such a way as to make it not ambiguous anymore. I just need an extra word, right? Small or hexagon only. Do you see that word there, right? It means you can be small, but not a hexagon. You can be a hexagon, but not small. That word only sort of excludes out the other option. Does that make sense? Okay. But when I go back, this is how I originally wrote it. The word only is not there, right? So these shapes all in the middle, they all satisfy this condition. So how many shapes are in both circles all together? 15. 15, yeah? 15 out of 24. Can you help me simplify that? Five what can I? Five, over five out of eight. I'll divide the top and the bottom by three, and there you go, okay? Um, and just for completeness sake, let's do that one more underneath. Small or hexagon only. I'm going to put that in capitals to really emphasize it. Um, now if we go with Jessica's original idea and, and exclude that one in the middle, what's my favorable number of outcomes this time? It's not going to be 15 anymore, right? Taking out these three, so how many do I get left with? 12. 12 out of the same 24 I've been looking at. What does that simplify to? A half. There we go. Okay. Now, this set of probabilities and this use of this very careful use of language, right? Um, you need to be really cautious with, right? You'll have something slightly different because you've chosen different rules to me, but that's fine. Um, once you've finished, I'm going to leave you now. I'll leave all of this up on the board. I'd love you to have your version of this diagram with just the numbers in it. That's the part that really matters to me. It helps me calculate all these probabilities. Um, and you can jot down an equivalent set of different things. I've got one, two, three, four, five, except these ones end up being the same. So maybe I'd like you to come up with four different probabilities that will have different answers at the end. Do you notice that? I've got this one's different to this one, which is different to this one, which is different to this one. I'd like you to come with four different things you can ask of your arrangement of shapes that will give you different probabilities, each of them. Okay. Uh, this actually has a name. I might as well give it that name for you guys. In the context of these questions, this big box around us is called the universal set. The universal set for this question, right? So this is not every single shape that can ever exist, yeah? Like, I don't have any trapeziums on my diagram, right? Um, these guys are just the shapes I'm considering at the moment. This is my universe, as it were, in which I answer my probabilities, okay? So do include that box. 